Welcome to Postcolonial Space. I'm Masood Raja. And today, in yet another video in my series on Palestine and on genocide in Gaza, I would briefly like to talk about how this particular invasion of Gaza has altered generally in the world people's perception of Israel and my own perception of Israel and how it has reshaped how we talk about it and how openly now people are taking a stand. And this is crucial because as far as my reading of social media and the world's pulse, so to speak, is that right now Israel has become a pariah state with very few allies in the world. And the reason isn't that people hate Israel and Israelis. The reason is that what they are doing in Gaza, what they have done and what they are doing is so palpable. It's so visible because of the courage and resilience of the people who have constantly reported and shown us what's going on. We have seen on social media confirmed destruction of hospitals, schools, apartment complexes. We have seen the image of images of children starving to death in hospitals, infants starving to death in hospitals. We have seen civilians being shot dead. We have seen young Palestinians being paraded around naked and blindfolded, and we have seen the emaciated figures of women and children. These images didn't come to us from the mainstream American media. These images came to us from citizen reporters, from people on the ground sharing it on social media. Out of all the social media platforms, and I've tested all of them, TikTok has been the only place where you could go for latest reports on what's going on in Gaza. So for the first time in the history of conflict between Israel, a mighty power, and the Palestinians, the Palestinians are winning the truth war, not by spinning the truth, but because the truth is actually being shared. Now, personally, how my views have been reshaped by this experience. I started this video series by a very conciliatory video on the Palestinian-Israeli conflict by suggesting that, okay, let's start with the premise that Israel has a right to exist and the Palestinians have a right to self-determination. In that video, I didn't question the legitimacy of how Israel was established, how Palestinians were evicted and forcefully removed from 500 villages which are on record, because my point was to build peace, both sides will have to concede. Now, as a scholar, and as a public intellectual, if I could call myself that, my opinion is absolutely that we must constantly point out all the apartheid policies of State of Israel, all the actions that they take against civilians, the murder of children, the withholding of dead bodies, the imprisoning, mass imprisoning of the Palestinian youth, the destruction of life in West Bank, the taking over of the Palestinian lands by the settlers. That's where I am. And what prompted me to get there, to get to a point where I said, no, I shall not sit in silence and pander safe solutions, but rather I will mount a critique, was what I saw. Israel and IDF doing in Gaza, and they are still doing it. And what I saw Joe Biden and his administration silently accepting first. 
that is the tragedy that moved me of the atrocities being committed by the Israeli Defense Forces and the silence and prevarication from the mouths of U.S. President and his, you know, lieutenants. There have been rays of hope. Of course, people in the streets all over the world, Senator Bernie Sanders, right, um, Representative Khanna, and of course, Rashida Talib and all the others who constantly have spoken against it. But what has mobilized is the global voices of people, young people, Muslims, progressives, people from the minorities who have looked at the footage, looked at the Israeli actions and said, no, this cannot be moral. This cannot be justified. And that is a powerful narrative because it's a narrative of truth. It's a narrative of justice. So I don't know what Biden's people are advising him, what the apex strategy is to buy more representatives or whatever. I have no interest in that. What I know as an individual, as a scholar, is that from now until the end of my days, I will constantly keep adding my voice along with the people of Palestine, the people of Gaza, and I will research and point out every atrocity, every act of genocide, and every colonial and imperial action taken by the state of Israel. Now do keep in mind, there is a risk for all of us who do this, wherever we are. We will get attacked, I get attacked, we get hate messages, we get called names. I mean, just yesterday I posted a brief video on TikTok. There was nothing in it that could even be loosely construed as, as hate speech. But for five minutes, that video was pulled because someone reported it, right? And then I appealed it and I said, re-watch re the video and tell me where my speech can be even loosely construed as hate speech. And of course, they released the video, but that's the kind of power that will be unleashed against us by people who don't want to hear our point of view, who are so invested in their own way of seeing the world, to whom it is okay to see children starve. Do we want to be with people like that, who give justifications for that, or will be on the side of the weak, the infirm, the oppressed, the starved, right? That's where we stand. And that's why I believe that this is a turning moment in the history of the world in how we perceive Israel, how we perceive Palestinians, and how we choose who to speak with. And there is no return from here. I don't care how much propaganda the IDF unleashes or how much money APEC throws in the air how many statements Joe Biden and his ilk makes, the truth is out. And once the truth is spoken, once it's out, once it shines light, nothing can stop it. That's my hope. So that's what I wanted to share today. I hope this was useful to you. If you or in solidarity with Palestinian people, if you agree with my opinion, please put a comment here so that I know that, you know, I'm with you and you're with me. Thank you so much for your support. Stay safe. Take care of each other. And as always, from me to you, peace and love.